And Professor Reima Aljarf, uh, she's a professor of ESL and ESP linguistics and translation. She has 700 publications and conference presentations in more than 70 countries. Some of her articles are published in the ISI and Scopus journals. She reviewed PhD thesis, promotion works, conference and grant proposals, and articles for numerous peer reviewed journals, including some ISI and Scopus journals. She won three excellence in teaching awards and the best faculty website award at her university. But the very important thing is, Professor Ray Maljarf, she is a champion of attending our conferences. And till now, she attended eight conferences out of 10. Let's give a big applause to her. Yes, cheers. <laughs> um, Professor Ray Maljarf, today she will talk about clipping in spoken English and Arabic implications for language learning. And again, let me remind, um, she will talk up to 40 minutes and then we have a Q&A section. Please, gentle reminder, turn off your microphones and cell phones. Thanks a lot. Professor Ray Maljarf, floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction and for inviting me. Uh, I'm going to uh, take you on a tour in Arabic phonology. In this lecture, I'm going to define clipping, give the types of clipping, give examples of clipping in English and Arabic, uh, give examples of faulty clipping in EFL or ESP student speech, and give the reasons for clipping and some implications for language teaching and learning. Now, there are many terms used, such as clipping, truncation, reduction, and simplification. These four, more or less, they are the same. Uh, there are other terms, such as abbreviation, contraction, acronyms, initialisms, and crisis. Uh, these are a little bit different, and I'm not going to focus on those uh, in my talk. Um, for ease of use, I'm going to use the term clipping. But uh, truncation, reduction, and simplification, uh, they mean the same. What is clipping? Now, a clipping is simply a reduction. What we do, we delete part of the word. And this part uh, ha will have the same meaning as the original word and the same part of speech. But it is used in colloquial language or informal language. Uh, examples of uh, clipped forms are exam, math, grad, lab, vet, zoo, flu, and so on. Uh, why do people use clipped forms? Because they are easier to spell, write, and use. And they replace original words in everyday usage. For example, instead of saying piano, uh, piano for it, it's easier to say piano. Instead of saying mathematics, it's a long word, it's easier to say math. Same thing for laboratory and other words. Um, Sometimes it's not acceptable to use clipped forms in formal writing. And uh, before we use them, we have to uh, check and see if the clipped form that we want to use in academic uh, context or business writing or any formal uh, situation is acceptable or not. Uh, what I did, uh, I have two, um, I have an English corpus and an Arabic corpus. Uh, the English clippings in the English corpus I uh, collected from internet websites, in addition, of course, to the ones I know. Um, in Arabic, I have three uh, collections, a classical Arabic clippings, and I collected those from Arabic grammar books and Arabic language websites. Uh, also, a clippings in colloquial Arabic, uh, and here we have two types. We have native Arabic words, and we have borrowings. So, um, the collection of 
clippings in native Arabic word of native Arabic words. I uh, collected, of course, from uh, some websites and also my own because I'm a native speaker of Arabic. The same thing with um, uh, clippings of the bird um, t- um, the bird forms. Um, I also um, selected, uh, collected those. I've been collecting them for a very long time uh, from my daily observations of peop- what people say when they speak and also from some informants like my friends, my colleagues, my students, my brother. Uh, after that, what I did, I classified both uh, the English and the Arabic clippings into four types uh, and then Uh, the collection, especially the collection of Arabic clippings, uh, and also the classification. Classification is is very easy. There is no problem. You cannot go wrong with uh, the classification. What I did, I had to verify, I had to validate uh, the collection with some native speakers of Arabic, uh, whether colleagues who are specialized in linguistics or non-specialized people, and to see if they Uh, if the forms I have uh, on my list are really used in spoken Arabic. There are four types of clipping. Uh, For clipping or initial clipping, uh, back clipping, uh, middle clipping, and complex clipping. Now, for clipping, uh, there is a linguistic technical term for it, uh, aphoresis. And uh, what we do here, we delete the beginning of the word. In uh, back clipping, what we do, we delete uh, the end of the word, whether it's a syllable, a vowel, a consonant, uh, and this is called uh, apocope. And there is also middle uh, clipping. So here, especially in English, I found uh, two groups of words. Um, In one group, uh, the middle part of the word is retained, and the first part, the last part are deleted, or The middle part is deleted and the first part and the last vowel, uh, consonant, like the S, uh, they are combined. In complex clipping, here we have compounds, two words used together. And in some examples, the first word is shortened. In uh, other examples, uh, the last, the second element is shortened. And in a third um, set of words, uh, both words are clipped, they are reduced. Okay, now I, uh, after I classified um, the list of words that I'm having uh, into the four types, I found out that the most common type is uh, the back clipping. And um, those words constitute 66%, and the least is middle clipping, 5%, and um, complex clipping, 14%, and uh, fourth clipping, 15%. Uh, Here I have examples of fourth clipping. For example, uh, alligator is reduced to gator, net from internet, uh, shoot from parachute, coon from raccoon, pike from uh, turnpike, and phone for telephone. Uh, these are examples of back clipping, and there's too many of those uh, in English and also in Arabic, uh, like advertisement, ad, exam, doc, gas for gasoline, math uh, in American English, and maths with an S in British English, uh, grad, vet, fax, for facsimile, gymnasium, gym, memo, lab, zoo, all of those are familiar. Um, these are examples of a middle uh, me or medial uh, clipping. Uh, here, the first set, uh, fancy from fantasy, the middle part is deleted. Ma'am from madam, same thing, middle part is deleted. Maths, uh, here, Uh, The middle part is deleted, and then the first part, last part, they are combined uh, to make uh, maths. And it's used in British English. Specs uh, for spectacles, uh, the same thing. The middle part is deleted. Uh, In this set, um, the first syllable, last syllable, they are deleted, and the middle part is 
retained uh, from detective, still from distillery, a script from prescription, flu, influenza, poly, shrink, same thing. Okay, in complex clipping, we have a compound, we have two words like up art from optical art, cablegram from cable telegram, showbiz from show business, org man from organization man, navi cert from navigation and certificate, chembot, this is used by students, chemistry, botany, when they talk about their area of specialty, uh, ed psych, educational psychology, high tech, this is very common, of course, uh, for high technology. Now I come to a clipping in Arabic. First, I want to give you just a quick idea about the Arabic language. Arabic is diglossic. It's a diglossic language. What does this mean? Uh, it is like German, like Greek. It has two forms. In German and Greek, there is a high form, low form. In Arabic, same thing. We have a high form, low form. The high form is the standard or classical form. The low form is the colloquial or the dialects that we use every day. You know, there are 22 Arab countries, and each country has its own dialect, even within the same country. For example, within Saudi Arabia, we have a different sub-dialects. Now, the standard form is used in formal settings, like when somebody, uh, um, prime minister, minister, pr president of a university gives a speech, in educational settings, uh, it's also the language of printed material, uh, books, magazines, newspapers, and also um, TV news or news TV. Um, they would um, talk about the news in standard Arabic. Uh, the colloquial form is used uh, in everyday communication or conversation, when we talk to friends, to relatives, about shopping, hobbies, entertainment, it's also very common on social media. Now, each form has its own unique clipped form or forms. Now, in classical Arabic, a clipping is a grammatical phenomenon and it is mandatory in most cases. We learn it in grammar. When we study grammar in school, we learn these things, um, the clipped forms um, in standard Arabic. For example, some personal names, uh, especially in the vocative case, when you call a, a boy or a girl, uh, it's like using a nickname. Uh, so, uh, Aisha, for example, um, can be clipped into Aish, Buthayna, Buthayn, Jafar, Jaf, Asma, Asm, Marwan, Maru. Also, uh, some compound nouns, uh, proper nouns, are clipped, like Madi, Karib, Madi, Sibawe, Sib. Now, I come to um, uh, clipping in common words, like verbs and nouns. When a verb or a noun ends in a vowel, in Arabic we have only six vowels. Three short vowels, three long vowels. The short vowels are a, u, i, and the long vowels are a, u, i. Now, if a noun or a verb ends in a long vowel. Now, this vowel is deleted from uh, the noun, whether it's definite or indefinite in certain uh, positions um, in the sense. And um, verbs are also clipped uh, if they end in one of the three long vowels, uh, if they are used in the imperative case or they are used, um, uh, a negative particle is used before the verb. Um, when a, a noun that ends in a long vowel is pluralized, the long vowel is deleted. Uh, in Arabic, we have three types of plural. We have 
um, sound masculine, sound feminine, and we have irregular. So these are deleted in the sound masculine plural. Because here we add a suffix, un, in, and an. So in some places, the, the n, the na, is deleted. Um, these plural suffixes, they are also used in the verbs because we have agreement in Arabic. We have gender as well, even in the verb. <clears throat> so uh, the n is deleted when the verb is preceded uh, by a negative particle and also when we have imperative, uh, the imp when we use the imperative form. Uh, because most, I, I think people don't know Arabic. Um, it doesn't maybe, um, I don't know if uh, it will be clear if I just uh, mention the examples. Um, <clears throat> okay, now I come to spoken Arabic, which is colloquial or informal Arabic, and I'm going to talk about clipping of native words. Now, at that single word level, we have very few clippings. Uh, clipping uh, are uh, common in uh, some uh, 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 um, nouns when they are used in the vocative case, like anko, khali, we say khal, ukhaiti, uh, that's my sister, khaiti, uh, zubaida, it's a proper noun, we say beda, Egypt air. We say al Masriya. Yeah. Turn on the microphone, please. Okay. Yes, now it's okay. So, I can't, okay. So, what am I going to do here? Should I share my screen again? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, so, um, as I said, um, a clipping. In native Arabic words, in colloquial Arabic, spoken Arabic, is extremely common. Almost every compound can be reduced. Uh, for example, names of countries. Let's say the formal name of Saudi Arabia is Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and Mamlak al Arabiya, Saudiya. We say a Saudiya. Uh, for example, airlines. Uh, Qatar Airways or Egypt Air, we say Qatariya, we say Masriya. Uh, for uh, um, the um, airlines of the United, uh, United Arab Emirates, we say Emiratiya. Rivers, for example, we say Nile or Euphrates or Amazon. Uh, universities, instead of King Saud University, we say Saud, I go to Saud or Sultan or Betrol. Uh, names of uh, towns like Mecca and Mukarrama, people say Mecca. They can say Al Mukarrama in formal um, writing or situations. Uh, Al Medina or Khamis Mshayt, they say Al Khamis. Hafr al Batin, Al Hafr. It's also common in compound uh, proper nouns or personal names. Egyptians, they would say Ab Aziz. There is no doubt. Abd al-Samir, they say Abd samir no da. In Saudi or in most Arab countries, Abdullah, they will reduce it to Abd as a nickname. Abd al-Majid, Majid. Abd al-Aziz, Aziz. Um Kulthum, Kulthum. Um Sad, Sadu. And we also modify a little bit. We add uh, vowels sometimes. Nur al-Din, we say Nur. Salah al-Din, Salah. Um, we also reduce some compound, um, common compound uh, nouns, like passport, we say pass. Uh, the Arabic equivalent also consists of two words, but we say jawaz. Assalamu uh, alaikum, assalamu alaikum, Egyptians would say assalamu alaikum, when they speak fast, uh, there is no L. Masal khair, they say sal khair. Yusuf Afendi, Safendi. Uh, uh, the same thing, uh, Guinea for gu Guinea and Bundug for Bundukia. Uh, in academic uh, speech, uh, when students talk about their major, 
They would say, uh, for example, uh, I'm studying um, chemistry or uh, engineering or uh, TIB, or they reduce um, names of disciplines uh, that consist of two words, but not all the time. Especially, for example, in biochemistry, here they use the two words. We, we have two words. Or computer engineering, they use the two words. Or civil engineering, they use the two words. Uh, for courses, for example, instead of saying, uh, I'm studying or I'm going to my legal translation class or simultaneous interpreting class, they would say legal or simultaneous or sociology, a translation. Uh, about uh, their major, they would say curriculum, for curriculum and instruction, or idara, administration, instead of business administration. Uh, when we talk about malls, supermarkets, shops, hospitals, chambers of commerce, companies, banks, they would say, I'm going to Mamlaka, instead of Mamlaka Mall. Or I'm going to Dalla instead of Dalla Hospital. Or I'm going to Al Ahli or Samba instead of Samba Bank. Or Atawniya instead of Atawniya Insurance Company. Now, what's very interesting and unique in Arabic is that Arabic even clips foreign words used in spoken Arabic, foreign words or borrowings or loan words. And sometimes those foreign words that are clipped in Arabic, they are not clipped in the original language in English or French. Uh, like English uh, words, um, foreign borrowings, are clipped into four types, like English. Uh, we have back um, clipping, for clipping, middle clipping, and complex clipping. Now, the percentage of a clipping of borrowed words, I'm going to focus on those because they are very interesting. 70% are back clipping. And uh, the least is complex clipping. And 12% for for clipping, initial clipping, and middle clipping. Now, in Arabic, 70% of the clipped forms are back clipped. In English, 66%. Almost the percentages are close in both languages. Now, I'm going to give examples of clipped um, forms. In Arabic, I'm going to start with back clipping. People say satel for satellite. Hey, tax, when they hail a taxi instead of taxi. Nylo for nylon. Instead of saying Pepsi, they say Beps. Give me, if they go to the grocery store or a small convenience store, they would say, give me two Beps. Uh, Kalashnikov, they say Klashen. Kangaroo, Kangar. Chevrolet, Shuffer. Kaspersky, Casper. Gypsum, Gyps. Aluminum, we have two clipped forms. One used by Egyptians and one used by other Arabs. Aluminia, or Aluminio. Antenna, Anten. Balcony, Balcon. Bangladeshi, Bangala. Uh, more, centimeter, centi, or santi, uh, 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 the spelling is different, but the pronunciation is the same. For kilogram, kilometer, we, use, we say kilo. For milligram and milliliter, we say milli. For hypermarket, and hyper, the hyper, I'm going to the hyper. For supermarket, a sober, I'm going to the sober. They change even the vowel. For intercontinental hotel, they say the wedding was at the enter. They mean intercontinental. Also, gigabyte, 
uh, giga, megabyte, mega, micro, bus. Egyptians, they would say, I took the mic uh, micro. Uh, psychopath, they say psycho. Uh, microphone, we have two pronunciations. If the speaker knows French, he or she would say micro. If the speaker knows English, he or she would use mic. More backlipping, now social media. Snap for Snapchat. Facebook, face. Laptop, lap. Hard disk, hard. Hashtag, hash. WhatsApp, watch. Username, user. Password, pass. Instagram, insta. BMW, BM. Even this, this is too long for that. <laughs> Rolls Royce, Rolls. Station wagon, station. Volkswagen, wagon. They would say Fox. Seven up, seven with a fa because we don't have a V in Arabic. Pepsi Cola, Pepsi or Bips. Domino's Pizza, Domino's. Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin'. McDonald's, they say McDonald's. Now cities, Addis Ababa, Addis. Rio de Janeiro, Rio. Casablanca, Casa. Casa. Kuala Lumpur, Kuala. Disneyland, Disney. Basketball, basket. Boarding pass, boarding. Spider-Man, spider. Living room, living. Okay, now for clipping. Now in these examples, the first syllable or part of the word is deleted. Album, boom. Autobus, from French, tbis. Automatic, thematic. Bicarbonate, carbonate. A bicycle, cycle. Coca-Cola, cola. Hospital, spital. Internet, net. Las Vegas, Vegas. Telephone, phone, like English. Now, middle clipping, uh, especially when words uh, begin with L, like album or Alzheimer. They say Zheimer without the L. Sometimes there is deletion and there is also reduction, like puncture. The Arabic, in, in Arabic, people say bansher. So there is no ka, and the cha is reduced to sha, because in our, um, in Arabic, there is no cha, except in colloquial language in, for example, Iraq. Cinema, they delete the N, they say sima in Egypt. Motorcycle, they say motorcycle, no R. Osmobile, they say Osnobile. There is no L and D and M. Uh, the word, a word like flannel, the L is deleted, but also we modify it. Vanilla. For Hollywood, uh, they say hill yud. So the O, they change the vowel. And also the W is deleted, hill, yud. Uh, in uh, some words, the Y is deleted, like radio. They say radu, daihatsu, dihatsu. Nutella, they say nutella. Dracula, they say dracula. Radiator, they say radiator. Complex clipping, and here the Arabic language is very smart. Workshop, they say warsha. So when you hear warsha, it will never occur to you that this is a loan word from, and they add another word for work, warsha amal. And we have a, an Arabic plural for it. Screwdriver, now a driver, the river is deleted, and the D is replaced by a ba. They say scruba. Coca-Cola. Now, here we have a blend. Deletion and then blend. Coca-Cola. 
So the co is deleted. Training suit, they say trink. A trailer, trella. Now, Mark Zuckerberg, Moroccans, they would say Zuckerback. Washington, D.C., they say, well, I'm going to D.C. Rickshaw, same thing, rickshaw. Now, what do students who study English as a foreign language say? Now, here I have two groups of words. Words clipped by students at the College of Languages and Translation. They would say, I have a semantic class. Of course, in Arabic. They would say semantic, linguistic, stylistic. Or style. I'm taking style. Instead of text structure, they say text. For vocabulary, vocab. For midterm, they say mid. Uh, for because, they use cause. They even write it in their essays. They write cause. For contrastive analysis, contrastive. For sight interpreting, they say sight. Introduction, intro. Now, other students, because I contacted several in different majors, economics, eco, or econ. They also say demo, biology. Now, I got those from students majoring in business, economics, uh, pharmacy, medicine, uh, applied medical sciences. So they say micro, gyna, neuro, hema, uh, histo, lab, uh, pedia, ortho, ophtha, gyna, psych, derma, nephro, pharma, biochem, gastro, palmo, and for hematology, oncology, they say hem, onc. Cardio, neuro, chemo. I um, think these would be close and similar to what American students use. Okay, now who coins these clippings? Now, well, they are automatically created by educated and uneducated Arabs, even by those who do not know English. Those clippings are used in colloquial Arabic and they do not, in most cases, they may not correspond with clippings used in English for the same words. Now, clippings are usually originate as terms of a social group, like schools, army, police, the medical profession, and they use them with each other, and of course they understand them. So when medical students say I have like a micro class, they, they understand. Or when the students at the College of Languages and Translation, they say, well, I have style. They know that they are referring to the stylistics class. Not style like clothes or hairstyle or some other kind of style. And those clippings are not coined as words belonging to the star standard vocabulary of English or Arabic. Some influential groups can uh, now, clipped forms, especially, let's say, the clipped forms used by doctors or medical students, they can pass into common usage, and they can become part of standard English. But clippings of a socially unimportant class or groups or group, they remain as group slang. Now, why do Arabs clip foreign words in colloquial language? You know, because they are long. 
intercontinental. It's very long. So, because it's long, and for some people who don't know English, they are unfamiliar, they cannot say the whole thing. Intercontinental. And it's a kind of simplification. And also, they follow the principle of least effort. And it's easier to use the short form. And still, those short forms are understood by other members of the society. When students use style and mid and um, linguistic or text, they don't think of grammaticality or correctness. They think, oh, it's cute to speak like that. It's a kind of student jargon. Some forms are clipped, or some clipped forms, or some words are clipped because Arabs are transferring rules of Arabic phonology to the clipped forms. For example, L, words beginning with L, like Alzheimer and album. What they do in album, the L is deleted. In Alzheimer, the L is deleted. Why? Because L in Arabic is the definite article. And when we use the definite article, it has two pronunciations. We pronounce it L like Al Walad, Al Bint, before certain consonants, and we delete the L before other consonants, like we say As Sama, As Shams, As Zahra. So the Z, before Z, there is no L, it's deleted. So people would say Alzheimer. Even the other day, I saw it on TV, on News TV. And this channel uses standard Arabic. I saw it in, uh, like at the bottom of the screen. They say Alzheimer with no L. Uh, same thing, McDonald. They delete the final consonant, whether it's a D or a D and apostrophe S, because they are following the rules of Arabic consonant clusters in word final position. Same thing in four seasons. When they say four season, hotel. They, they delete the S because they are applying uh, the rules of Consonants um, clusters at the end of words. We don't have consonant clusters of, especially with an S in word final position. So they delete it. Now, implications for language learning. We should raise students' awareness. As a teacher, I should raise students' awareness of the difference between ik and x. Now, students would say stylistic not stylistics, for two reasons. First of all, because they do not know the difference between stylistic, the ik and the x. That ik is uh, words be, uh, ending in an ik are adjectives, and x, these are sciences and nouns. And the other one, because of the consonant cluster uh, rule in Arabic at the end of the words. Same thing, they should know that style is not stylistics, although they are both nouns, but they have two different meanings. Um, also, uh, sometimes my students, they used to write for me in their essays, cause, and I would just draw their attention that this is not standard and they cannot use such eclipsed forms in formal writing, when they write an essay, when they write a letter. They should also know that clippings of loan words, foreign words, borrowings used in spoken colloquial art be used in formal writing or formal speech. For example, they say living, they say lap, 
for laptop. We have an Arabic equivalent for laptop. We have an Arabic equivalent for hard disk. We have an Arabic equivalent for user, username or password. We do have Arabic equivalents. So they sh in formal writing, formal speech, they should use the Arabic form, not the clipped form or even the foreign form, even if it, it is in full. When we come to standard Arabic, it's mandatory that clipped forms in verbs and nouns are used. It, it, it's mandatory. We have to. And as I said before, we study these in grammar. Okay, with this, I come to the end of my presentation. If you have any questions and comments, I'll be glad to answer the questions and uh, listen to the comments. Professor Rayma, you professionally done on time. Thanks so much, really appreciate it. So we have 10 minutes for Q&A. Uh, please go on with your questions. Can I start the question, please? Yes, Thank sure. Thank you, Dr. Reem, for this beautiful presentation. Being bilingual, Arabic and English, um, um, I can see your frustration about the translation and the, the translation of the English words to the Arabic. Uh, can I ask a question? Is, is it due to the lack of pe people that translate these things, being not professional with the language? Because I know that working in, I teach a train uh, in the UK and I teach a train in the Middle East. When I go and with the English language teachers and I go and see shops and we pick up some uh, mistakes that are translated wrong from Arabic to English and uh, the teachers will say, oh, this is wrong. They know it's wrong. Uh, but when I ask them, why is it wrong? They tell me, uh, doctor, because they have sent it to somebody who is not professional in English or in the translation. Can that be a factor to, uh, to what you are talking about? Uh, well, I have a paper about this issue. Why people use, for example, the foreign form instead of the um, standard form or Arabic form, there are several reasons. One of them is because they don't know the equivalent. The other one because they think it's fashionable and it reflects high social status when you use an English word, a foreign word. And it's getting very, I mean, very bad uh, in Arabic because more and more foreign words are used in spoken Arabic. Although we have equivalents, if you ask them, they know. They know the equivalent, but because they use uh, the loan words or the foreign words every day, so it becomes a habit. But it's not because of lack of uh, equivalence in Arabic. Arabic is very rich. Instead of one equivalent, we have five. We have many equivalents. Uh, but uh, some may not know the equivalent and they don't want to check the dictionary. Or even if they enter it in Google Translate, Google Translate will give them the equivalent. But they don't even use that because they are lazy. And I have a paper about, about it. So do you think, Dr. Rima, that there should be uh, in every country um, some like a policing on the language itself? Unfortunately, in Arabic, we don't have an equivalent to, for example, that the French Academy in the Language Academy in France or Spain or even Russia, which prohibits in France, for example, people are prohibited. They cannot use foreign words in, let's say, street signs or names of um, stores. But in Arabic, we have language academies, Arabic language academies, but they have no power. Uh, now, every time there is an, uh, um, and you, you know, there are new terms coming up every day. So this is what the Arabic language academies do. What they do, they would come up with Arabic equivalents to those new terms, but they have no power uh, to reinforce those uh, terms. You know, we need 
a, like a directive from the government. Unless there is something like that, uh, people will use it. But still, even um, some equivalents, Arabic equivalents, you cannot force people to use them. And sometimes people will come up with their own equivalent. For example, mobile, mobile phone. Once they came to Saudi Arabia or to Arab countries and people started to use them, even common people, they coined the word for it and they say jawal. Although jawal is very, I mean, very accurate, very cute word, but still some people would say cellular or they would say mobile. Even Al Jazeera would say Al Jazeera mobile. I have these examples in my paper. But they say uh, um, this for commercial reasons. Um, uh, yeah, so as I said, uh, yes, but unfortunately, uh, those Arabic language academies, we have one in Egypt, we have one in Syria, we have one in Damascus, we have one everywhere, but they have no power. Uh, and what made it worse is the social media. Oh, you can't believe, because before, uh, we used to, like, even if you want to write a message, a note to your friend, we used to use standard Arabic. Now they use colloquial Arabic. When you use standard Arabic, each word is, has one spelling form. It's spelled one way. But in the dialects, even the same word is spelled differently by different people. Sometimes they write, you don't know what they are uh, saying. I also have a, a, another paper about the adult of um, the language of adult uh, on social media. Okay, this is my question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Very interesting question. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Rita. Uh, thank you. Can I ask a, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Good afternoon, uh, Professor Raymond. Thank you very much for a very interesting and very, I think, uh, will be useful for us. Uh, good presentation uh, you have uh, you have presented. So I have a question. So I know we know that uh, there are no uh, the same equivalent like English uh, letters, English uh, like alphabets in Arabic. There are no equivalent. Yes, mm -hmm. equivalents of some sounds. Yes, some letters in Arabic yeah. uh, uh, alphabet. Yes. So. Uh, while teaching uh, uh, phonetics, how do you explain or how do you teach the sounds? Uh, for example, ga. Uh, no. uh, for example, uh, ga. For example, the ga sound. Sounds, uh, in uh, Arabic alphabet. Uh, yeah. For example, the ga. We know, we know that before before uh, teaching English language, first of all, we start to teach phonetics to pronounce uh, word, all words correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. For example, um, the sound "ga," we have no "ga." Uh, that's why people, when they spell words with a "ga" sound, like "goody," which is a brand name for, like, let's say, tuna, "goody." Uh, in Saudi, in the Saudi dialect, because when we speak, we uh, the ka sound, we say ga. So we would say, spell goody with a ka. In Egypt, because they would say for jamal or jamal, gamal. So they would spell it with a ja. In other countries, they would spell it with a ga. So uh, it depends on, uh, they would substitute it for an Arabic sound, which is close depending on um, the Arabic dialect that's using the word. So this is what we do. And we use also the short vowels because we have diacritics for the short vowels. So we use the uh, diacritics to represent the pronunciation. But if we teach, but if we, like, let's say I'm teaching a phonetics course, like I was teaching contrastive analysis. 
So I was talking about how we compare the English phonological system with the Arabic phonological system. So I would use the International Phonetic Alphabet for both, for, to transcribe English and Arabic words. Thank you. Clear now. Thank you very much. Uh, may I ask a question? Uh, thank you uh, okay. very much, Lima, for this wonderful mm -hmm. talk. Uh, so my question is, if you've got the possibility in Arabic to combine clipping with uh, diminutive suffixes. Oh, I haven't thought about that. Diminutive. Yes, uh, you so know, because... As a basis. Uh, I'm trying to think, I don't think, yes, because, you know, we have rules for the diminutive. You add, sometimes you change vowels or you add a suffix, kitab, kutayib. So here the a for, from kitab is changed into ya, kutayib. So um, I don't think in foreign words it cannot be possible, in foreign words. But in uh, Arabic words, yes, any word can be, um, we can uh, use the diminutive with any word. Of course, uh, uh, nouns, they have to be nouns. But in borrowings, no. It's, it's, uh, it's not common. It will be difficult and it will make it even less understandable, less legible. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, Professor Rayma, I mean presentation and very nice, good questions. Uh, Professor Mario, thanks a lot. Um, let's move forward with the next speaker. And you are true champion of FLTL conferences, Professor Rayma. It's your eighth out of 10 FLTL conference. Yeah. You deserve a special token of appreciation. Thanks. Yeah, you should send me my um, cup, big cup. For that. Yeah, yes, that. Yeah, last time you gave me a present. This time, well, everything is online. So you, you can, now no flights. Flights have been canceled in uh, inbound, outbound. They have been uh, canceled. Today I read it on the news because of the new yeah, Corona thing. We are missing. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. And now uh, we are moving forward with the next.